But you know, he then, he, he, when he sat down and wrote this letter um, to his father-in-law, uh, he described what it was like working for, for Washington. Mm -hmm. And he describes Washington as very moody and temperamental mm -hmm. and says, um, the great men and I have come to an open rupture. He shall for once at least repent his ill humor. Now, I had never encountered George Washington in that mode. You know, and far from being disappointed by that, I actually was relieved. It suddenly humanized him. He mm. came alive for me in that moment, seeing him, not only in that letter, but other letters that Hamilton wrote uh, during the, um, uh, the, the, the war, mm. uh, actually um, gave it an immediacy to Washington, you know, that I hadn't mm. uh, experienced uh, before. You know, they say that uh, no, no man is a, is a hero to his valet. <laughs> and Washington, uh, during the Revolutionary War, was working under excruciating uh, pressure. Yeah. And I think that precisely because he had such immense self-control and he had this enormous image to live up to, he blew off steam in private, and mm. Hamilton saw that. I think also Washington's nature was that, um, it was why Washington did so well in life. Washington was a real perfectionist. He mm. was very, uh, whether it was at Mount Vernon or you know in the federal government, he was very exacting mm. and demanding in terms of what he wanted and demanded very, very high performance uh, from uh, people. So he was a very hard-charging um, boss, um, not at all the easygoing, uh, soft shoe boss that yeah. people <laughs> had uh, imagined. And I, but I could remember that moment when I read that letter. Yeah. Uh, I felt that there was a George Washington that had not been captured, and I wondered, because Hamilton was very good at penning word portraits of people. He was very perceptive, and he was a good enough writer that he could really uh, make uh, characters come mm. alive. So that, for me, you know, that was the keyhole through which I mm. began to spy a portrait of Washington. Uh, that had not been uh, done before. Mm. And I think what happens with Washington, you know, because we all love and revere Washington so much, uh, both uh, then and now, there's a, an almost automatic tendency to try to um, uh, wipe away the blemishes yeah. or look the other uh, way. And I feel that... He that gets the benefit of the doubt. He gets the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's done him a terrible mm. disservice mm. because it's turned him into... Uh, a somewhat unreal character mm. in the American mm -hmm. yeah. imagination when he was all t too real. And I felt that the, um, you know, the flaws in his uh, character, to my mind, instead of detracting from his greatness, actually enhanced yeah. the greatness because you realize what he had to overcome emotionally to be mm. George Washington. The country was looking to him for a kind of perfection. He had ordinary human flaws and he was always kind of caught in the conflict between yeah. those two uh, things. So that was really the starting point of that uh, book. And of course, when I was doing, uh, uh, Hamilton was great fun to write about because he was on the one hand so brilliant and on the other hand mm. uh, so uh, flawed uh, that the more I studied Hamilton, um, more I admired Hamilton, but the more I revered Washington. And I can remember when I was working on the Hamilton biography, I would say to people, Hamilton is the uh, subject of my biography, but Washington is the hero of the, uh, <laughs> of, of the biography. Yes. You know, Washington yeah. always does the right thing. Hamilton, most of the time, <laughs> does the right thing.